So it's been a while since I've done a video and it's really because in my first series I wanted to just cover the basics and I hopefully covered a lot of the basics. Now in this next series of videos I want to do, I want to talk about differentiating yourself in the world of pen making. And there's a lot of pen makers out there and there's a lot of different things that you can do to differentiate yourself. But I thought one of the questions that come up the most on social media is casting. And how do I get into casting? And if you ask me, you should start with color casting. So what I did was ask a good friend of mine, John Underhill, who I think is the best caster out there, to come in and do a video for me. So John's going to take you through the world of color casting. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you encourage John to actually start doing more videos on his own. So with that, I'm going to drop it over to John. Hello. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me. Uh, you caught me at a good time. I've got my shop clothes on. I'm ready to get messy. I'm in the casting room and I'm going to be making some colored alumilite urethane uh, pen blanks. They're going to cast in a block like this and then we're going to cut out the individual blanks so we can see what kind of character we get inside. Let me show you how we do it. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be using a block mold like this. So I'm going to spray some mold release inside and I'm going to place this in my pressure tank and I'm going to put a shop clamp light over it to warm it up. That way my tank's getting warm and my mold's getting warm. I'm getting rid of the humidity that may affect our casting and this will also stop our resin from rolling in at the corners of our mold. So while the mold and the tank are getting warm we're going to measure out our resin. We're going to use a digital postal scale and you want, because we're using Alumilite, urethane white, it's got a two, maybe three minute working time. We want to measure this in equal parts by weight. Now I know my mold holds about 280 grams of each. So there's 295. Another thing is, I write on my cups. This one says AW, the, the other one said BW. That way I can continue to reuse these cups during my, during my day and I don't have to worry about cross-contaminating. Alright, we have equal parts by weight in grams because it's the smallest amount of measurement. Next, I'm going to take my cups that I'm going to mix my colors in and what I want to do is take one side of the cup and crimp it create a spout. What this will allow me to do is control the flow of the resin as I pour it into my mold. I need one cup for each color. I also need a mixing uh, bowl and what I'm going to use for this is a standard kitchen plastic mixing container. What I like about these is when you're done with them you let the resin cure and it peels out and it's clean to use again. For mixing I'm going to use a drill with a spade bit. And what I've done is I've ground the tip off the spade bit and the corners. I've rolled everything over on a belt sander and I've got it in a designated drill for resin casting because as you can see it gets a little dirty. Alright let's get started. I just removed the, the bowl mold from the pressure pot. It's nice and warm. So now we're going to mix our resin. We're going to add our colors. Before we get started the first thing I want to do is remove the lids from all of my color containers. And I also removed the little spouts that come on them. Uh, if I had to turn this over and try to put so many drops in my resin, a lot of times that spout will come off and you'll get a large glob of, of dye, unwanted dye in your resin. So I always remove them and I'm going to use just a simple little stick. Uh, you can get dowel rods, you can use Chinese chopsticks, or you can use skewers, whichever. And uh, these, make, these make mixing the colors in the, dye, in, in the resin a little easier. So, the first thing we're going to do is, we're going to add the thinnest side first. And in this case, it's B. If I were using clear or clear slow, it would be A. The reason I do this is because it's always easier to add thicker resin to thin resin. Um, if I poured the, th the thick first, it's a little harder to get the thick away from the walls of the mixing container. So you often leave unmixed resin along the side of the container which can result in a failure in your cast. I 
I always use a drill to mix because it speeds up the time and uses less working time that I'm going to need for pouring. Now you can divide these based on how much color you want of each. I'm going to have more white than black. So because this cures white we don't have to do anything to it. The hard part is knowing how much dye to add to the color because as this clear color cures it turns white which will make the colors more visible. Always have a shop rag handy to wipe things off as you go. And the dye, you can use the mix, the drill mix if you want uh, to properly stir all that, but it breaks down pretty quick, so I don't usually do that. A temperature thermometer is always nice to have. We're at 91 degrees. I would normally start pouring around 100 degrees. So we'll set our mold out here. And what we're going to do is alternate the colors. We're going to start with white first because that's what I have the most of. And this stuff is going to jump pretty quick. We're at 100 degrees now. So as I pour this, I'm going to, the first couple layers, there's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of difference, but I want to pour this to where I change my direction every time I pour. And what this will do is give you character in your blank. Now as you, as you cast, you're going to figure out which, what results you like based on your pouring technique. And different techniques will result different uh, characters. So that's something fun to play with as you learn and give you some, uh, give you some options. Now what we're going to do is we're going to place this in a pressure tank. We're going to pressure it up to about 40 pounds and we're going to wait about 20 minutes for it to cure. One thing to remember, before you add air to it, always close your valve. That way you don't flood it with pressure pushing the resin out of the, the mold. So while that's curing, let's talk about mixing colors real quick. Um, Alumilite White, because it cures so quickly, you want to make sure that you're, you're getting as much working time as possible without wasting it on uh, mixing colors. So because I only had three colors in this one, I was able to do it with a stir stick. If I were going to have five or six or maybe even seven, then I would definitely want to use the drill. And what I would do is I would add my color to each cup, then add the resin, and then start with the lightest color, which in this case would just be the clear, so or the white, so I wouldn't have to do anything with it, and then go to the blue. And I could mix the blue, and I wouldn't have to take a lot of time wiping off the drill bit because the next darker color is going to cancel that out. The little bit of residue resin that's going to be on the bit is not going to contaminate it. You wouldn't want to go dark to light because then you're going to see a significant change in your color. But you can get away with going from one color, so if I were to mix the white again, then I could go to blue, and then I could go to black, or if I had purple. Um, wh where you want to be careful is if you're mixing yellows and reds and orange. So obviously you'd want to go yellow, orange, red. Uh, that way each of those colors aren't going to contaminate the next darker color. Another thing I want to add, silicone mats or some sort of placemat when you're pouring resin is really helpful. Uh, because this is my pouring station, I'm not too concerned about it, but I still want to keep it clean. So... I place clear plastic, and this is a 6 mil spec plastic that I place down, and then I put a, a mat on top of it. I try to do all my work on the mat on top. Um, as you can see, the resin's going to run down the cup, it's going to drip. That's okay because it'll peel off this mat real easy. Where you don't want to get it, and let me show you what happens, where you don't want to get it is, is on your wood. So as you can see, I'm going to have to sand some of this down or scrape it off. Uh, because it's my casting table, I'm not real concerned. but. This is one reason why I tell everybody, try to have a designated casting area because you certainly wouldn't want to have all of that on your table saw. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. 
We're able to take it out of the pressure tank now. I wanted to clarify also real quick. I use a pressure tank anytime I'm using urethane resins because when urethane resins cure, they create a gas. So it's important that you put it in pressure. That way it compresses the air and it doesn't leave air bubbles in the middle of your pressure, of your uh, resin block. All right, there's our block. Now it's still gonna be warm, and I've never cut these on the day that I cast them. I always wrap them up in a towel, I set them in a pile when I'm doing five or six in an evening, and then I'll let them sit overnight. That way the temperature in the resin dissipates slowly, the dye in the resin, everything gets to cure to a hardened state, uh, but this will be hard enough that we can take it out of, the, out of the bowl. Let's check it out. All right, so here's what we have to do. Usually I start, I just pull on the sides a little bit and that will separate it. Now as this cools off, it comes out of the mold a little easier. But normally you just turn it over and shake it and it'll drop out. And there's our block. And then what we would do is take this to the bandsaw and cut it. So let's let this sit. After it cools off, we'll cut it apart and see what we get. Alright, let's cut this thing open and see what we get. So there's a lot of ways we can do this. Uh, because we poured the blank all different directions, it really doesn't matter if we cut it one way or the other. If this were a blank that we had a pour side to side or something we were looking for, we, want, we might want to think about which way we cut it. But uh, with this particular blank, I'm not going to be too concerned. Uh, you can cut it on a fence. I always, I've got a jig here with, that always allows me to cut a 7 8 blank. So let's see what we get. <laughs> And there we go. We got a nice color swirl and some movement as we continue to cut through the blank. We're going to see this change in every blank. It'll be different, but uh, pretty simple, right? Well, there you have it. Pretty quick, simple, Alumilite white with their transparent dyes. Um, if you're not comfortable when you first start out with such a short working time, I recommend starting out with clear or clear slow. For the transparent dyes, you're going to have to add a little bit of opaque white to it to get these colors, but it'll give you a 7 or 12 minute working time, which will give you more than enough time to make sure you get your process down. Mark, I want to say thanks for having me, and I wish everybody happy casting. So I don't care how many times I've seen John demo. I love watching his demos. I think he's just one of the best demonstrators out there. So with that, as always, I want to say thank you for watching. If you have a chance and you like the video, please give me a like. Please subscribe to this channel. John and I will both monitor the questions in here, so please ask us any other questions. And I'm always looking for new topics. Please shoot me some new topics, and there will be new videos that we can use. And you can see, I don't mind asking my friends to help me do the videos. So I've also started a new Facebook group called 10 Minutes to Better Pen Making. Look it up. Join the group, and that will be the best place to get questions answered, or contact me, or contact John. We promise you we'll help you in everything. Thank you. Thank you for watching. This video made possible by the fine folks at Exotic Blanks. For all your pen making needs, Exotic Blanks has you covered. Find them at www.exoticblanks.com. And also by Pen Makers International the educational source for pen making.